Okay, the next way of administering medications we wanted to show you is uh, an intranasal administration of some vaccines. And we're getting more vaccines that are going to be given that way. These are particularly used for respiratory vaccines because in, if we give an intranasal spray of the vaccine, it comes in immediate contact with the nasal mucosa, and this is frankly where we, we the animals, uh, first have contact with the pathogens. So I wanted to show you a little bit because it's a little more complex, and um, just so you have an idea of how this is all worked out. These are modified live vaccines that we have at this date with uh, the intranasal administration. And so these are vaccines that come in two parts. We have a desiccated form here, which is just a powder, and we have a diluent, which is usually sterile water. So there's two parts. Now, uh, you may already know that in small animals, uh, a lot of your vaccines come this way. So you mix uh, your vaccines. You might be very familiar with the method here. Uh, but to, to do this, uh, we would be getting our diluent into our syringe. You do want to make sure that you get the proper amount of diluent here in, drawn up into your syringe. Often it's like the one cc amount or so. Just getting air bubbles out. Then the way I do uh, with this particular, this is the influenza vaccine. I put my diluent in and I actually get it dissolved up a little bit while that stopper is still there. I take a little band off of here. And I take the rubber plunge put your cap off of there. Oops. This is the intranasal catheter. I like to draw a little bit of air up into my syringe, which gives me a little cushion here. I draw the vaccine up into my catheter. And then we are ready to instill that into the nasal passage of the horse. So Dr. Hamill, what's the difference between using a modified live and like a killed vaccine? Because of course there's some killed influenza vaccines out there too. Yeah, this is true. Um, as I showed you, you have, you have the two parts. It's attenuated form and something you have to dilute. The thing, big thing you have to remember is that once it's diluted into the liquid form, that it does have to be used within a certain time limit, 30 minutes, certainly within an hour, because it's starting to lose its viability uh, as it uh, maintains in this, this liquid form. Now, the other thing is we have some other modified live organism vaccines out there, like our strep equi. So this is a vaccine of streptococcus equi, uh, which is a particularly virulent organism. They have, this is an attenuated form again, but we try to be very, very careful when we're using that vaccine as far as not to contaminate the uh, premises, ourselves, the animal. In our practice, we try to use, if we're using that vaccine, we try to use just that vaccine and not do other vaccinations on that animal, particularly because we don't want to get the, for instance, a needle from another vaccine contaminated with the strep equi and then inject that needle into the muscle, causing an abscess. Sure. Uh, we ourselves can get contaminated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can contaminate our hands and contaminate something else. So it's a uh, you know something to think about. And as we'll show you when we use this, um, give this uh, flu vaccine, uh, the horses often will snort out, sneeze out some of the material, and you want to be very careful with it. Certainly. We'd like to demonstrate giving an intranasal vaccine. We're going to give Leroy a uh, flu vaccine mm -hmm. with one of the new modified live products. And before we get involved in doing this, giving intranasal vaccines is a little more challenging than you might think from reading the wrapper. I, 
It's true. <laughs> I think they resent having the feeling of this small tube going yeah. up their nose. And so they're, they're likely to be tossing their head arounds or misbehaving just a little bit. And they remember from last year when you did to the last year, too. <laughs> yeah, I think they do. Um, we're counting on Leroy being pretty good. So, again, because we're making a movie, we're going to modify our technique. If you were working on a client horse, though, almost certainly the two of you, the tech mm -hmm. and the veterinarian, would be working together and working mm -hmm. relatively in mm -hmm. close so that if things started to go sour, you'd be mm -hmm. moving in the same direction together. But I think Dr. Hamill's going to work on the other side. Yeah, I'll show it on from the other side because you'll be able to see it better there. So the, the technique would be I'd stabilize the, ha the head somehow with my hand so that I'm sort of got some contact with the animal. And you get an idea how the animal is going to resist or not resist by if you just have the finger in his nose there, you get an idea of what he's going to do. You're going to put this into the ventral meatus. So you slide this in like so and then squirt your contents, they usually will raise their head often. The dose is calculated such that you saw a little bit roll out there. That that's okay. The do dose is calculated such that they uh, are allowed to have some rollout like that. Horses will often raise their head. If this um, vaccine just gets in contact with the nasal mucosa for um, a few seconds, five seconds or so, uh, it will be effective. So we don't have to worry about that, that rollout. Uh, sometimes they will sneeze or so snort. Uh, that's okay too, but. Leroy was a good boy. Yeah, he was.